Hello, everyone. How are you? Yes. Great. Uh, well, welcome everyone to the discussion with the Latvian author, Inga Gaile. Uh, I want to start by also conveying greetings from the incoming Latvian ambassador, Mr. Maris Salga. He's arriving only next week. That's why you have to just be fine with me here. Uh, Inga hails from a medium-sized country in Northern Europe. It is larger than Switzerland, Belgium, the Netherlands, Denmark, Estonia, and many other countries. <laughs> and, but it, the population is two million. Latvia was founded almost 101 years ago, and this year we marked 15 years of membership in the European Union and NATO. The greatest resource, besides our forests covering half of the country, is our people. Latvians linguistically related to Lithuanians as the only other Baltic nation. We are among the last peoples in Europe to be conquered by Christianity. Pagan culture is very much based on the cycles of the sun, assigns notable mythical roles to female goddesses. Your destiny is decided by goddess Laima, and goddess Mara cares for the fertility of the land, rivers, the sea, and the natural world. The first book printed in Latvian is said to be in 1525 for Latvian Lutheran community in Germany. The end of the 18th century and the beginning of the 19th century is when you start seeing the first printed literary works in the Latvian language. In the second half of the 19th century, Latvian writing flourishes. Epic poem by Andres Pumpers Lashplaces, translated as Bear Slayer, is one of the greatest examples of national romanticism. In the beginning of the 20th century, poet and politician Aspasia excels and brings forward feminist ideas. During the period of loss of de facto independence, Latvian authors find creative ways to write coded patriotic works and manage to fool the Soviet censorship machinery. Just a few days ago, our national library marked 100 years. Built to resemble the castle of light depicted in the play by, by Rainis, who was the spouse of Aspasia, it was designed by the late Latvian American ar architect Gunars Birkert. For Latvians, reading has been always fundamental. Our unique language that finds direct roots in Sanskrit, Sanskrit has been a uniting factor for peoples throughout centuries of foreign rule. We are very proud what we have contributed and continue to contribute to European and world literature. The Embassy of Latvia has dedicated this year to promoting the visibility of translated Latvian literature. Our embassy is the first and only one that has a little free li library available to the DC community. We also have a not so subtle poster on our wall about our introverted literature. We are partnering with the ex export uh, platform called Latvian Literature, the American Latvian Association, the National Library of Latvia, to introduce you, the American public, to our excellent authors. I would also like to invite everyone tonight at 6 p.m. to the opening of a cartoon exhibition called The Life of I, I stands for an introverted Latvian author, <laughs> at the Miko restaurant. The address is 1636 R Street Northwest. 1636 R Street Northwest, Miko Restaurant. It's a Finnish restaurant. It's a Latvian and Finnish collaboration. And also, I want to say, uh, finish by saying a special thanks to Marie Arana from the Library of Congress, and also a very special thanks to the Latvian Honorary Consul in Philadelphia, Mr. John Medvetskis, for uh, contribution and support throughout years. And now, please enjoy the discussion with Indra Gaila and the moderator, Indra Ekmans. And buy, and buy her book. It's on Amazon. <laughs> So it's not pressure at all to stand for all nation. <laughs> um, well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Indra Ekmanis. Um, I'm a fellow with the uh, American Council for Learned Societies and an editor at Public Radio International. And it is my absolute pleasure to, um, to uh, interview uh, Inga Gaila, who is a, a celebrated uh, Latvian author, an award-winning poet, novelist, playwright, and theater director. She has published four collections of poetry, two collections of poetry for children, four plays, and one novel. She has won the Latvian Literature Award and the prize for the, uh, from the Poetry Days Festival in Latvia, among many other honors. In English, her work has been featured in international journals. She regularly performs her poetry at international festivals, um, and her poems have been translated into Bengali, English, German, Lithuanian, Spanish, and Swedish. And she has translated the work also of Russian-speaking poets into Latvian. Um, 
So it is quite, quite a pleasure to be here uh, with you, you today. And I think that maybe we can start with, um, with a reading as well. Yes, I will read some poems in English, uh, pardon my accent. And yes, um, that's it. Oh, I'm not quite a theater director. I have studied it, but um, yeah, OK. <laughs> I know that it's very important to tell all these good st things. And uh, I'm very honored to be here. And it's uh, very thrilling to see all these people interested in literature and reading. Yes, because um, the reading, of course, is the, the main thing that has formed me as an author, uh, because I started to read at four, and books saved me from a lot of things. And uh, I wanted to help, maybe help, it's just, to some other people as well, as the authors have helped me. So, so the first poem. Uh, would be fog, but I want to stand. Is it OK if I stand with this microphone? microphone? Yes, it's because uh, I'm standing also. <laughs> um, <laughs> fog. Look, uh, this is fog, sweetheart, real fog. Look, what you have in your hands is a damp, wrinkled map. Look, here's the turns that would have taken you to the checkpoint. Look, here's a boy you won't be able to look in the eye now. Look, here's autumn, leaves rustling underfoot. Look, here are your friends at the bar who have no idea what to do with the photos you gave them showing a man on his knees before a 12-year-old girl with her, pants, with her pants down. Look, this is fog, kids, real fog indeed. Look, here are people who will never be able to look you in the eye. Look here the earth and see, you can already safely say it. You stand, you grow, you learn to control your panic attacks, you become a bridge, a tree, you learn to look people in the eye, you make friends with people without arms and legs because you think they understand you. You write this poem, sweetheart, for the thousandth time, hoping that one day it will vanish. Look, this is fog, kids, real fog. Streams of snot and sperm, a solstice of tears. And I emerge quietly by the church in the forest. Eons have passed, and I'm still wearing the same sweatpants with the broken elastic. And people look at me and some say, well, mm, really, couldn't she write more tactfully, a little more decently? But if you ask me, I say, fuck it, children, don't need to know what the world is now better of roses. Fuck it, I say, why the fuck do you have to be so tragic? We liked you better before, when you drank a lot, lost and gained weight, and fucked anyone who gave you the time of day. So get down here, Benessas. That is some fog, kids. It's really quite some fog. And I have nothing else besides this worn out, acerbic, sinewy tongue and the fingers that write these words on the screen as though on a vast lake. I'm emerging from the forest. And I ask you, kids, you in your family summer houses, living rooms, in the backs of cars, in your conjugal beds, you children of all sexes, in some sauna, drunk and drugged, you kids who have survived. I tell you, it's scary for sure. But still, please come out, once and for all. Or wait a little. Be gentle with yourselves. And I will begin to breathe quietly here. Uh, yeah, I want to read one more poem. Yes, that was the plan. That was the plan. Um, the second poem will be about uh, Riga Ghetto. It's more or less. Uh, we are a small nation, and um, uh, we had uh, these golden times so-called golden times before the Second World War, which I write in my first novel, which is called Glass Shards in English. But uh, in this, during this time, we had authoritarian regime of Carlos Ullmanis. And during this time, somehow, nation was weakened with all positivity and um, small gen genocides there against Latgalians and um, uh, socially disturbed people. And when the Germans, not Germans, Nazis came in, uh, we, we were not possible, 
and we were not capable as a nation to guard our Jews, for example. We were not capable as well to guard our, ourselves as well when Soviet army came in. But we were not capable, we were weak as a nation, I think, and we were not capable to guard our Jews. There were nations that guarded their Jews, for example, da Danish people. Uh, but so it's all prehistory. Yes, and before the, war, before the Second World War, we had 30,000 of Jews, approximately, and after the Second World War, we have three. So, it's quite a thing. Uh, so, I will read uh, the poem, Rebirth of the City. Ah, and so, there will be uh, street names, uh, and the street names are not translated. The street names are the uh, streets where Riga ghetto uh, was, and so you will get some glimpse in Latvian as well. So. Rebirth of the city. On the day the entire city went down on its knees, on Moskavas, on Jersikas, Ebreju, Liksnas, Kievas, Jakapils, and large Plesha streets, on Virsai, Shilauvas, Lila and Maza Kalna streets, and heads were bowed in Rumbula forest. On that day, the entire city went down on its knees. Those who had been guards, and also those who could not pronounce G or draw a yellow star. And their children, and grandchildren, and their great-grandchildren, a whole field of people with heads bowed to become the foundation for a new city that would never forget that would walk in their footsteps, that would ask heaven for forgiveness, for this sustained silence, not looking one another in the eye, this rushing past in a city in which every day the shadows of those with colored stars on their foreheads do not walk the sidewalks. And I asked, Grandma, dearest, how could you sleep, you and Grandpa, on those November and December nights, in fear of war, naked trees, knocking on windows, holding each other close to keep warm? How could we sleep on all these nights since? We are a small nation, indeed. We lift our trembling voices like flames and we sing. I have a friend who has only half a brain after a drunk driver left him to die, but he lived. And look, this friend can hardly talk, but he sings. And that's how it is with all of us. We sing. Who ran us over? On that day, the city went down on its knees, and a plea, shaking like an autumn leaf, rose up to heaven. Forgive us, we who looked aside, who shot, who stood you in rows, who told the children to look away, who let you walk in the gutter, who thanked God for having been born light-skinned and blonde. Forgive us, we who did not bring you bread, who did not sew yellow stars onto our clothes, who did not join the partisans to resist, forgive us, we who were not Janice, Elvira, Anna, who were not among those 270 others. We are an even smaller nation than we thought. On the day when the city went down on its knees and not even words but trembling whispers went up to the heavens, on the day deep down inside the city, its heart slowly resumed beating. And after 700 years, the birds came back to the city. Look in your iPhone. Today is the day. Thank you so much, Jan. So, Inga, much of your work deals with uh, these themes of trauma, uh, sexual violence, um, and included in these kinds of themes is the theme of uh, generational trauma, which is passed down from parent to child. Perhaps you can maybe discuss how these themes factor into your work, and maybe if you see this as a, a trend, perhaps across the region, um, maybe as a mechanism that, that kind of deals with these painful histories that you're speaking about, specifically these Soviet and Nazi occupations. Yes, um, thank you. Um, we, in Latvia, I think we are in post-traumatic, uh, we have all post-traumatic syndrome and we are dealing with it uh, by different kinds uh, of 
we, some of us are drinking uh, a lot and uh, all of us are singing and I see it's as coping mechanism actually as well for a bit for post-traumatic stress syndrome. We, in, I, yeah, just a minute. So, uh, Second World War, um, in our region, in Latvia, but not only in Latvia, of course, uh, whole Europe and uh, especially Eastern Europe uh, has uh, experienced Soviet uh, occupation and Stalini Stalin Stalinism as a awful genocide and Nazism and um, we all are hurt in that way on our on another. And as I see it, how it comes into my work, of course it comes through me <laughs> and uh, selfishly, but um, I, I have experienced some um, uh, trauma myself, and, but then I, when I started to speak about it, I found, um, so I experienced that well, uh, this trauma, uh, sexual violation and uh, and uh, that there was a situation when uh, in Soviet Union is what made this trauma even stronger was that then in, in Soviet Union we didn't have sex at all like there was no sex like uh, <laughs> and so people who experienced uh, sexual violation um, like girls boys and women and men they uh, especially girls and boys, they, when, they, when it happened, for some time they didn't know what has happened actually. And uh, it, I think it made it even worse because for some time, for example, me uh, uh, tried to find some information in Latvian Soviet encyclopedia. And so I saw that what has happened was homosexuality because it was called uh, in Soviet Latvian encyclopedia like perversity. So I thought, okay, maybe this happened. And for a longer time of period, I was afra really afraid that I will become pregnant, although in this event was not uh, quite as involved. Uh, sorry for details. But so it was a whole a lot of fright uh, and for me, and I believe that I'm not, sorry to say, I was not the only person <laughs> experiencing that. And, um, so it was uh, very difficult for the people uh, in Soviet. Uh, and uh, for example, as well as um, um, uh, as well as, uh, for example, w women uh, who experienced uh, rape uh, in their families, it was casual, it was normal, I think, more or less, and nobody. And one more. I, I will get back to track uh, right now. Um, um, and what one, one more thing, for example, in, uh, in, in Soviet Union, women and men used uh, abortions as contraception. And uh, still, we haven't talked about it still, and there are all, women who are, uh, are around 50 and 60 who are living with this trauma and not, not talking about, I, I'm, and I'm talking about tens of abortions, uh, like whole and a lot of women have not talked about it still. So we are a traumatic society, <laughs> that's clear. But, um, uh, and I, in my second novel, which I have finished and which will come out um, like in a days, I'm trying to understand uh, how how we, uh, how all this um, Nazism, for example, and um, it, how it uh, influenced women, especially, especially. Uh, because um, when uh, I started to, t uh, I, I didn't talk about my trauma uh, till late twenties, and when my first daughter was born, I went to therapist. That's, I think, a normal thing, in Latvia at least, is that people uh, don't, um, that women don't take care of themselves, but when they bur a ch child is born, and at l they need to take care, care of the child, so they find a way to therapist. So, um, and uh, when I started to talk about my trauma, I found that it gives me freedom. And uh, so I wanted 
to talk about our traumas as well uh, to, and to, to, to understand how the Second World War and how it has influenced our society and how we can, how, how almost everyone is influenced by terrors of uh, Nazism and Stalinism and uh, how we can go on with so traumatic experiences. So, um, if, I, if I'm, I, 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 I get lost sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, if you, you can freely just uh, ask me some more questions <laughs> uh, and um, um, stop me from exaggerating a bit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get, we get back on, on the track. <laughs> But um, you mentioned your novels, um, Stikli, and which is Glass Shards in English, and then its continuation, Sky Stas, um, The Beauties, also in English, uh, which, which take place, as you mentioned, in, during the authoritarian regime um, uh, in the late 1930s in Latvia, and then also in the Ravensbrücke um, concent women's concentration camp in, in the 1950s. Um, in 19... 43, it starts with a monologue of uh, this uh, woman who is in Ravensbrück concentration camp, and um, it's a concentration camp for me, women. And, um, so, and then there's a, uh, one part, first part is about her, about Violet. The second part is about Magdalene, which is living in Soviet Latvia and is a bit um, border person. And the third part is about nowadays a uh, woman who is um, in some way connected with both of the previous, uh, both of the first two heroes. Mm -hmm. um, in some ways, these, these seem a call to the reader to examine the history that you're speaking of, um, uh, some of the underlying culpability of society that you kind of talk about also in your poetry. Um, for example, you point to the influence of political leadership, um, and how nationalism or perhaps the desire to shape an ideal or what is perce perceived to be an ideal society um, actually dulls that society, makes it less brave, uh, less empathetic. Um, maybe you can, can speak a bit about this and how you, how you are, are examining this in your work and perhaps also um, in today's context, which, uh, which we're seeing this kind of turn uh, back towards these nationalistic uh, ideas um, in the mainstream? Yes, um, I think, yes, mm. I, I can understand the peop that uh, all this uh, stream to the nationalism and uh, it uh, comes from people's urge to be safe. Uh, but still, I think, for example, that um, we have, uh, especially in Europe, but you as well have experienced that um, this uh, uh, trying to be too much safe and uh, is dangerous, and tr trying to exclude someone who is uh, different is very dangerous. Um, and so it's, um, So I, I tried, what I, what I tried to do in, in my life and work, and, and, and it's challenged all the time, is to accept uh, diversity in all, in all forms as it comes. Um, and uh, and um, yes, and uh, of course, I, I understand that state, uh, sometimes state, contradicts uh, this um, uh, state is made as um, a structure which needs to guard their citizens. And so they want to look for the weak places. Where is the weak places? And so, but, and, um, but I think that uh, the that state should uh, become more and more open uh, to different forms and not to mess with uh, people's private lives <laughs> and so but I, I lost track so um, yes I think that what is what I'm doing uh, as it, well in the novel um, 
is um, they are not uh, they seem to be like historical novels but they are mostly uh, like dealing with people's emotions and how they managed to deal with very tragic events and how they've tried to uh, and uh, tra tragic events which we can find in during these days as well and in nowadays as well and how they tried to find the, the strengths to go on uh, and, and uh, sometimes it's not necessarily some forms or formulas that, that gave them strengths sometimes it's like i don't know what it is uh, what gave them strength so i <laughs> As you see, as I'm not a very structural person as well, <laughs> so uh, what I, I try to say is, uh, I, I think that, uh, for example, success as well as very much, success, for example, has discriminated itself. And uh, so I don't know, I, ha I don't have this formal how to live further, but uh, I think that maybe we should become more and more open to different possibilities, how people can be and how they can live and they, how they want to live. And not that, that every day we sh maybe should tell ourselves that, uh, okay, I, I know that there is no formula and that uh, there's, um, yes, that, uh, that we should be open to possibilities that everything is different that we have believed yesterday. <laughs> More or less like that, but not, of course, uh, and yeah. So, uh, is it uh, understandable, more or less? Uh, I <laughs> think yes. Um, I, I'd like to maybe pull pull on that thread a little bit about um, success and uh, how maybe success is uh, undermining itself in some ways. Can you can you explain that a little bit more? That thought a little bit. <laughs> Yes, uh, we, we have been um, very success-driven uh, society. I mean, uh, not in Latvia, but all of us <laughs> have been very success-driven society and we teach our boys uh, to be strong and uh, earn a lot of money and teach our girls to be beautiful and uh, they all, we have this, um, set of rules, what it, mean, what it means to be successful. Uh, but, uh, and what I'm, uh, and it, it has proven that it's rotten. <laughs> because, uh, and through, uh, of course I'm exaggerating a bit, of course, uh, but through, through, uh, uh, through um, um, when I'm uh, exploring uh, all the data for my, for my novels, for example, and I found out all this um, stuff about what people have experienced. Uh, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I start, I think, I was thinking about what led to that, what ideas led to that, and uh, Germany, wanted to be successful as well. They wanted to guard their people. They wanted to give them money and safety. And not, not money, but wealth and safety. And uh, it led to, and they wanted to, uh, to pull, out, pull out the strange ones. Uh, the, and it, it led to terrible events uh, in the, for example, so I, 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 through this, so through experiencing and reading about, for example, about uh, women in Ravensbrück um, who experienced, uh, it's, it's just exam in, uh, an example. Women in Ravensbrück uh, spent their uh, uh, f five years and um, they were uh, uh, Jews, uh, Roma women, uh, French women, resistance women, uh, Polish women, um, and uh, th for example, they, uh, they stayed there five years, so, and uh, let's take, uh, in co the, some of them survived, and then they went, uh, and then Soviet army uh, freed them, and that, that's one more fact which we have 
only now started to talk about, about Soviet army's rapes. Uh, and for example, one, one of the survivors told uh, that she thought that maybe she will be saved by rape, saved from rape because she weighed 30 kilos, but she was not saved from this rape. So all this, all, all is together. And of course, uh, and uh, the more I get to know, I, I understand there's no, uh, this, there's no Germans, there's no Soviets, there's, there are just people who are driven by unhealthy power, uh, rage, power stream, or some, there's something rotten <laughs> in this, uh, how we structureize the world and how we want to get what we want and uh, in this power uh, urge, yes. So that's why, I, and from this I uh, understand that um, we need to overlook this, this necessity to get so much power, and this power of success is power. Uh, our wanting to get successful is want, wish to get power. So that's why I think the success is overrated. <laughs> so, but of course, I know I'm sitting here, and it's an important event, and, and, and in some way, I'm, I'm, I'm very glad not in some way. I'm very glad and honored to be here, and I, I have some kind of power as well, uh, as you see, because I'm sitting here on the stage, and you are down there. <laughs> so. so we don't have so much time left, but I would like to ask a few more questions before we open it up um, to the audience. Um, I, can't, I don't know if we can see this life of I banner, but Arthur's mentioned, mentioned this idea of the, uh, the introverted Latvian writer. Um, would you say that you also are an introverted Latvian writer, or maybe not? You're also a stand-up comedian. Um, but or, by the way, yeah. how, I'm, um, how I'm talking, I think you, guess, you can understand I'm quite introverted. <laughs> uh, because, no, of course, uh, I'm, no, no one of us is... Uh, introvert or extrovert only, but uh, I have some, <laughs> some issues. Uh, but <laughs> uh, introvert uh, is, uh, introvert campaign is, I, I, quite, I think, quite successful Latvian uh, marketing campaign of Latvian literature, which, uh, uh, it, which uh, have taken um, uh, this introversy, we, we are introvert nation, we are uh, afraid of a lot of people, we, wa we, we, are, we want, don't want to talk to strangers, and we are happy in our um, small, small this, uh, houses with our books and food, and that <laughs> nobody come and uh, ask us out uh, in the huge world. But yes, and so I think this is a quite a good campaign uh, to, uh, to, to introduce the uh, world to, this, uh, to these people. And um, I think it's uh, good as well because it uh, draws attention to this introversy as well as, uh, not as a, a clue. Not as a mistake. Not as a mistake, but to uh, the potential uh, for new things and um, and recently, of course, there are a lot of uh, researchers that introvert people uh, can give a lot to the world and can, that they, in their uh, silence, can create a whole uh, new ideas and, um, and um, can be quite good in their work, <laughs> so, yeah, so. Maybe you would like to quick also speak about the um Stand up? The stand up and, yes. and the burgeoning stand up scene in Latvia. Yeah, um, uh, also, I'm the artist who every time before the uh, performance, even today, I, I are afraid and, and, and think, uh, asks God to finish it all, not to go <laughs> on the stage. Uh, I, uh, four, four years ago, yes, I started to organize women stand up in Latvia because I was in very low point at, in my life uh, because of divorce and I wanted to somehow to get out from this point uh, with laugh or, or just try to look uh, to this divorce 
with some irony. And um, so, and as, I'm only, as I was only feminist in the village, someone um, in uh, this, um, Someone asked me uh, to uh, do some stuff uh, for 8th of March, which is uh, International Women's Day. So, and I thought, okay, we will do stand-up. And I found some of my friends, some of, them, some of them were funny, some of them were just brave, but... Uh, <laughs> and what is good, most of them are my friends still. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so we started to perform and... Uh, uh, once a month, and interest, uh, we thought it, uh, that it will be just once a time event, but um, the interest was huge. Like, we were not so funny, of course, but, uh, <laughs> but, but the, there was no such thing in Latvia uh, where women could come and talk, so we uh, filled this uh, void. And um, so we are performing uh, from that time once a month, and every... Uh, women and men as well can come and perform and there's not, for, in the first times they don't need to be funny they can talk whatever they want and so they have been uh, very different performances there have been very tragic performances like when a woman told about her rape uh, or abortion experience so but there are, some of us are quite funny as well. And so we, our fame has arised a lot. Um, and as, um, they are asking us to perform in court, per, uh, some business meetings and <laughs> pri private uh, parties. And, uh, um, and uh, we have been in television and whatever. So we are doing well. <laughs> uh, and we are having power, more and more of it. So. I believe we do have a few minutes left. Um, if anybody is interested in asking a question, there are microphones, or we can maybe just come here or come to the microphones. Um, and maybe we'll collect, collect them, uh, all these three at, at once, and so then we can answer, answer them together. Please. Yes, thank you very much, Ma Sinha. Oh. That means sister. And um, I really appreciate uh, the work that you're doing with um, how the final solution was carried out in Latvia. Actually, the conference of Banze, where they came up with the final solution, came after Riga and Rumbule, when the Nazis came back and they said, we're losing our best marksmen to alcoholism and insanity. We can't keep this up this uh, shooting 24,000 peop uh, people in two days, which happened 14 kilometers outside of Riga. So good for your courage. And, but one thing that I don't agree with what you said is um, it's the Latvians you said, we succumbed to the Nazi uh, terror they, that they brought and made our land into killing fields that it was because we were weak, because um, what about the French, you know, Louis XIV, the course. French Empire, uh, We are Napoleon, not the only ones, of course. Right? What about Hungary and Austria, um, the Austro-Hungarians um, empire? So we No, no, we are not the only ones, of course. Uh, no, but, but we I'm, have uh, to dig deeper. Why is it that we, a soulful and highly spiritual, ancient culture also gave into this. And so, you know, you talk about power, you know, so there's this thing, the powerful and the weak, and the weak and the powerful. And where do we find the power to, um, to heal this? So I would love to offer you a collaboration of developing a ritual for this. Yes. So that's my question. Okay. Uh, would you like to? work with me? <laughs> no, but congratulations. It's too private. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, but thank you for the question because it mm -hmm. need to be uh, quickly to say that of course we have our strengths and we are a fantastic nation actually. We are only two millions and we still have our state and we have our language and we have uh, our folk songs and fantastic literature which comes basically because of 
uh, we have so our literary language is so young, so, and we have very strong connections to folk uh, songs, and so we are a fantastic nation. And of course, but it's a bit of like this part in arms. Um, uh, a generalization. Li generalization a lot. I'm speaking about this uh, event and about us being weak in uh, not guarding Jews. But of course, we have our strengths, and we are. I'm very proud uh, to be Latvian, and uh, uh, and I will write no only in Latvian. So that's. Uh, Maybe we can have the next, so so we can collect these next two questions as well. Okay. As, and, and then we are in hurry. Yes. So yes. We're. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> that's why I'm talking so yeah. fast. <laughs> Yeah, mine is um, kind of maybe a follow-up question, but um, I've also realized in the last few uh, years how post-traumatic stressed Latvians are in Latvia and in the rest of the world. Um, pretty much everybody is. But um, course, people yeah. have talked about the heroism that of also of the, the people, both the people that stayed and the people that left. You know, um, some people look at it, and I think it's like a paradox. It's a really weird thing because you can see it both ways. And I was just wondering if what you thought about that as well. Kind of, you know, there's the, the. Anyway. I'll, so, I'll yeah, and stand, and stand, uh, and that's of course necessary to say that people are heuristic. But what is uh, these traumas and all these tragic events? It's we can't talk about these events, not talking about them. And of course, if we are starting to talk about these events, about rapes and killings and so, it, it doesn't feel so good. It's not so, arty. It's, it's not, not convenient. It's not co comfortable. But we can't get rid of these traumatic events by not speaking about them. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It's like, just like it is and so. Uh, of course, there are good things, and Latvia is beautiful. Please come all to Latvia, <laughs> and uh, and we have our heroes. And I think that we are a strong nation because we have, we are so small. But after all these traumatic events, we still have our state. That's so very important. But but still, we have done as well not so good things. So, but and we we have to 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 heal. We need to talk about these things. And that's my question. Where did the courage come f for you? Where did you find the courage to speak about not one taboo, but these multiple taboos of, that are both personal and then radiate out into the nation? I, thank you. Um, uh, they, a lot of comes from books. That's what I, I, I think that reading is that we gave me Gave, gives me strength. But of course, I have experienced as well this healing process. But when I started to talk about st some stuff that has, that has happened to me, I experienced freedom. And that's what I wanted to give or to, to show to people that when I'm starting to talk about that, it's freedom for me, and I'm more free, and I can. Is about it. I can enjoy life. I can enjoy life, but of course, not everyone should talk about that. It depends on temperament and so. But uh, me, uh, I need this way. So, but yes, uh, it was the question was where I, from my uh, difficult but wonderful parents as well, mm -hmm. and. Um, from reading, yes, I think books have saved me a life. I have st I started reading at four, uh, and I read uh, all the library which was at um, at uh, ne next to our house, uh, grown up books and uh, Soviet books, and I was uh, a lot of books <laughs> and not so good books as well. So I think I'm very thankful to all writers. Yes, that's uh, I think it's. Thank you, and not only to writers, but to, mostly to writers. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a, that's a really excellent place to, um, to maybe finish our discussion. I'm sure that if you have some questions, uh, perhaps Inga will be, uh, be happy to, to speak to you also off the stage. But our time has come to a close, so um, please do join me again in thanking Inga Gaile. Thank you so much. You were wonderful. Thank you.